Recall in the last lecture that when we had an outcome y and a regressor x, y was n by 1 and x was a regressor that was n by 1. Recall that if we wanted to minimize the least squares criteria, our minimum worked out to be beta hat equal to the inner product of y and x over the inner product of x with itself. Now imagine if we, and this if we were to look at the y and x pairs, this fits a line through the origin. However, you know, let's add some data over here. Um, a line through the origin may or may not make sense. So let, let me draw a, a picture that's a little bit closer to what I'm thinking. So imagine if you had a setting like this. There's a clear linear relationship, but trying to fit a line through the origin to that data set isn't going to work so well. So what you might consider doing is resetting the origin to somewhere more relevant, okay? Or of course fitting a line that also has an intercept. But let's imagine if all you had at your disposal was regression through the origin. Well, first thing you might want to do is to just reset the origin to be right in the middle of the data. Then when you were to fit a line through the origin, it would go right through the data in, in a pretty reasonable fashion. At least it would take care of the, the, the problem that um, you know, the origin is sort of nowhere near the data and it's forcing the line to, 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 um, to go into a position that, that is not at all reasonable. So how, how would we get right in the middle of, da of the data? Well, we would just say, let's define y tilde as the centered version of y, one where we've subtracted off the mean from every data point so that um, it now has mean zero, and then this is ostensibly just shifting the origin right into the middle of the data set. So that would just be i minus, you know, jn, jn transpose, jn inverse, jn transpose times y. And then if we were to center our x, that's of course i minus the same matrix. times x. So now if we were to do regression through the origin of this two matrices, i.e. try to minimize y tilde minus x tilde beta, what would squared, the norm of that squared, what would be the beta hat? In fact, just to differentiate it from the beta before, let's call it gamma. What would be the gamma hat that we would get? Well, it, it's of course gamma hat would be norm, inter, I'm sorry, inner product of y tilde and x tilde divided by the inner product of x tilde by itself. Okay, well that is equal to y transpose times i minus, and let me just replace this matrix so I don't have to keep writing it. Let me just call it h. i minus h transpose times i minus h then times x all over x transpose times i minus h, i minus h times x. We'll transpose there. So now if you go back to our previous lecture, or a couple of lectures previous when we were talking about variances, what you can see is that this works out to be this quantity in the top. That works out to be n minus 1 times the covariance, the empirical covariance between y and x. And this quantity in the denominator is n minus 1 times the variance of x. Well, we can manipulate that. And let's, you know, to make it um, a little bit more um, statistical, let's, let, let's write as rho xy is rho hat xy is the empirical correlation between y and x and sigma squared x hat is the empirical variance of x and sigma hat squared y is the empirical variance of y. Okay, so that makes it seem a little bit more statistical. This language over here seems more like we're writing computer code than writing mathematical notation. Okay, so let's take that. So the covariance is nothing other than, we can write the numerator, right, the numerator is n minus 1, that could be written as the correlation between y and x 
times the standard deviation for x times the standard deviation for y. And the denominator is, of course, the uh, variance of x. And then we should put hats over them. OK. So the n minus 1s cancel out. One of the two sigma x's cancel out. And you get rho hat x xy times the standard deviation of the y divided by the standard deviation of the x. And this is sort of a famous formula. And that's basically saying that the slope, if we were to center our y regress, our outcome, and center our regressor and fit the regression to the origin, the slope of the best fitting regression line is the correlation between the y and the x, the estimated correlation between the y and the x, times the ratio of the standard deviations. Now a couple things to note. First of all, the units of this quantity are correct. So the slope has to be in units change in y over change in x. So units of y divided by units of x. Okay, but let's, let's look at this quantity. The correlation is a unit-free quantity. Then it's multiplied by the standard deviation of the y, so that's units of y, divided by the standard deviation of the x, so that's the units of x. So this quantity, the, our estimated slope, has units uh, uh, y units divided by x units, which is what it has to have. Uh, it's also interesting that if we reverse the relationship and fit x as the outcome and y as the predictor, all that happens then is these two reverse themselves because the correlation, it doesn't matter which argument is first. So then it works out to be rho hat xy, sigma hat x divided by sigma hat y. So that also implies, notice uh, what this also implies is if we standardize our two regression variables, in addition to centering them before we do regression to the origin, then both their variances are one and the regression to the mean, I'm sorry, the regression correlation works out to just, the regression slope estimate works out to just be the correlation. Okay, so that's maybe everything you need to know about regression to the origin. And the big take home message is that if you center your variables first, regression to the origin leads to, and we'll see in a minute, this leads to the exact same regression slope than if we fit a line that has both an intercept and a slope. But it works out to be the correlation between the x's and the y's times the ratio of the standard deviations. Okay, so let's try some computer code to just illustrate this and, and uh, compare it with, with what LMR's function for regression is doing. 